Okay, so thank you for taking. So now, as I mentioned before, we are going to go through a very uh, comprehensive overview of the technology being developed. Uh, what I will show you is a video that, that uh, uh, shows the, uh, the number of technology that we have developed in, uh, in a number of scenarios. So first of all, uh, let me uh, briefly re recap that uh, in the context of Resader, we had to develop, first of all, we had to deploy uh, in a very quick manner by using existing technology uh, standard SDI, so to say. And to do so, we decided to use uh, uh, technology from, from Integraph. In this case, you are seeing the portal from, from Integraph, which has been customized for the use of Resader. And uh, that was just required because we needed to have uh, an infrastructure to start with so that the final user could immediately upload their data data, make the ingestion part, check all the metadata, and as soon as the new metadata uh, profile was available, then again, adapt all the information and check that everything was consistent. So to start with, we developed this, uh, uh, this portal, we deployed this portal, we customized it to make sure that we could, uh, it could fit the, the requirement of the project. And as you can see uh, from the video, it basically allows stand access to, uh, to geographical information, special temporal information to some extent, uh, through the use of uh, uh, a number of, of features. You can search for uh, relevant information, you can access and connect to the, uh, to the services uh, available through the, through the SDI. Uh, you can change, for instance, coordinate reference system. But as we're running slightly uh, uh, in delay, let me jump to the main development of, of, uh, of Griselda. So that it becomes more more uh, uh, interesting. So uh, you can also access time uh, uh, rich data, uh, and that was very important for us. So that again, you can see that through the slider, you can access. Uh, in this case, it's WMS information of the island of, of Ha in, in Croatia, and uh, in a very user user friendly manner. So that basically concluded uh, the. The, the, what we needed in terms of, of uh, basic access to to, um, to standard information, but that was of course enough. So uh, starting from the uh, uh, let's say uh, up, uh, bottom up, we we we, uh, we developed the geo portal itself of Preset. That's not, not the infrastructure that we have, have seen before, but the geo portal that becomes public uh, is a public result of, of the project. And as you can see now, the, the geo portal of, of the project is made uh, uh, as a standard web GIS interface. On, on the, the left hand side, you have uh, uh, the, the mapping part, well, the, the mapping window, and then on, on the right side, you can have access to uh, uh, the cataloging. So if you move to the uh, uh, catalog view, then you can see that uh, you can perform uh, searches uh, uh, of the catalog, uh, register to uh, CSW services, and perform queries. Uh, over the uh, services available to Brisade. You can also add new services, uh, new uh, point to new CSW services, and uh, uh, well, form the, 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 the sort of query that you would expect to. Let me again jump a little bit forward. Uh, and then as soon as you find the, the services that you are uh, interested in, then of course uh, you can uh, see the, 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 bounding, the bounding box of the, of the data set of, of uh, relevance. And uh, whenever you want, you can have access to uh, additional information that might be available for a, a specific asset. Most notably of all, all this is done over spatial temporal information. So uh, the search is not only performed on a spatial basis, but also on a temporal basis. So that you can filter information that is relevant to you also according to, to, to time. And this will see that uh, it will become uh, extremely important in the, in, in the last part of, of the video. So basically, this is the, the <coughs> geo portal. And the GeoPortal has been developed uh, by extending the, the GeoPortal, uh, standard GeoPortal with the time functionalities. And that complements the, 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 the client that we are going to show you uh, in a minute, that uh, provides you access through uh, uh, the, 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 the full set of, of functionalities of Brisele, including uh, the, the simulation part and the, the sensor part. So again, uh, through the geo portal, you can have access to uh, information you need, also accessing the, the, the XML, or you can also print out uh, uh, information that is inter interesting and relevant to, to you. But let me jump on uh, uh, again on uh, more uh, relevant features. Again, you can see here that uh, uh, you can uh, perform, uh, um, you can access uh, various uh, services. And uh, as you would expect, you, can, you are able to, to select a uh, feature of relevance and extract uh, uh, additional information on uh, each of them. And 
for each of the layers, as usual, uh, as you can expect, you can uh, either in, uh, inquire information on, on the various feature, or you can also change uh, uh, transparency of the various uh, um, of the various uh, uh, data sets, or perform uh, transformation in real time. For instance, assuming that you have uh, uh, a layer uh, that uh, is on a different uh, uh, well, it's being put with a different uh, EPRCG code, then as soon as you add it to a stack of existing uh, layers, and uh, um, then the system would automatically reproject and show them uh, in a consistent manner, as again you would expect that. And you will see this in a second. Can I So, uh, as I was mentioning before, and as Federico was uh, showing you, the idea of GeoPortal is that you should also be able to, to see uh, temporal information. So again, uh, the, the standard functionalities were extended to provide support for time information, so you can access uh, information, in this case meteorological information, uh, through uh, a slider that allows you to filter the relevant data set of, uh, of, of interest of yours. Uh, and this is done uh, interactively, basically, uh, as a standard uh, web GIS would do, but uh, the, this is done followed with the spatial data, but also with, with uh, temporal information. So, in practice, what this GeoPortal does is uh, the, the, the basic set of functionality that you would expect from uh, a standard web GIS application, but it also supports uh, time. Uh, so that's the other value. This couples with the, with the catalog that Federico had shown before. So we can see like now you can perform uh, queries, uh, and then again queries can be performed either in the standard manner or you can also specify the interval of, of, of interest, and that's something that is very important. So at the bottom of uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the user can identify dates of, of relevance, and then once the the, the, the query is, is launched, then the, of course the catalog would return only the, those uh, those information that are relevant uh, time-wise uh, to the to the user. And uh, as soon as then you, you select one of the uh, of the of the data set of, uh, of interest, then, then you can get all uh, all the additional information you, you would expect. And as Federico was uh, showing before, again, these only refer to the temporal extent that you had specified within your, your, uh, your query. So that's again very beneficial because it fits well with the existing repository and uh, with the GeoPortal on the other side. So these are the two, let's say, web-based front-end that represents the first achievement of, uh, of the project. Let me jump on uh, to, the, to the client because that's something that I'm very keen on showing you. That's, uh, again, probably the most visible achievement of Grisail. So what we have done is that, uh, uh, starting from the technology that we have uh, developed, we have provided support uh, for uh, spatial temporal information through uh, a 3D interface. That's something that was considered, again, very important for the final, uh, from the final user. So what you can do, you can uh, specify the address of uh, WMS, in this case WMS T, services and then select uh, the, the, the resources that is relevant to the user. You can see it on, on the right hand side. So it, it all fits with the previous picture. And then this information is automatically shown within the, within the 3D globe uh, so that uh, the user can then uh, fly to the area of interest and change the, the parameters uh, of uh, uh, the time parameters. So in this case, retrieve the, uh, the, the parameters regarding the, the, the area of interest, but it can also change the time bar so that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the various resources available interactively change over the three scene and the results are immediately available to the user. So it becomes, again, much more streamlined and much, and, uh, and much more user-friendly for, for the final operators to, to, to access uh, uh, temporary information. And, uh, this approach actually represents the, the, the front end of the, shows the front end of the services that on the back end were, were uh, developed. So th that was uh, as far as WMS T, with T is time, not uh, transactional, is concerned. And then uh, we move on to WCS coverage. So similar approach, the user would uh, select uh, the, the service of interest. Uh, um, and again, this is done in a pretty strict Manner, the, the address can be typed in by the user, and uh, then as soon as uh, the, the, well, these are the, it's just a list of, of the most recent uh, of the most recent services. Then again, the user uh, once the, the interrogation is is, uh, is sent to the server, the service returns back uh, 
uh, alt capabilities, of course, so that the user can select a layer uh, of, of relevance, and then once the layer is selected, then the, the relevant uh, resources can be uh, can be uh, selected through the, this interface. And uh, as usual, all the uh, relevant information, for instance, the, um, uh, the, the coordinate uh, system used, as well as support form and so on, are, are always uh, easy to, to, to see from, from the user. And then, as soon as the relevant information is selected, then the, the, the final query is sent to the system, and the results are shown to, uh, both in 2D and in 3D. That's a warning that tells, that tells the user that uh, this information will be loaded also in the, in the memory for the user within the 3D interface. And as you can see, basically, the, the 3D client that extends UDIC uh, has an additional set of uh, uh, graphical components that can be used to, to render the, the, the coverage information in this case. Uh, so as soon as the user flies in, uh, the, the, the information is rendered in a number of different ways. You will see that uh, you can decide the type of uh, visualization that you're interested in, for instance, from image to vector lines. You can see that these are vectors showing the various coverage measurements, and then you can amplify the, the Z so that you can better appreciate the, the, the Z extent of, uh, of the coverage. Or you can also decide to have uh, uh, spatial operators on, uh, applied on top of, of those of those information, for instance, to allow better visualization of the, uh, of, the, of the data itself. And you can decide to have it lying on, on the ground or to have it flying above or to switch between different visualization modes. Uh, as I showed before, uh, you can use eye of an image or through vector lines or you could decide to use uh, patches uh, that can, again, be more useful to help the operator understand what's really going on. Then from within the same environment, you can also access sensor information, in this case through SOS, uh, Sensor Observation Service. As usual, the, 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 the user connects to the relevant service through this uh, uh, wizard. Uh, so once the, the, the service of interest is selected, then again, there is the handshake, and then through the through the capabilities, basically, and then the, the system uh, goes through a series of steps whereby the user can decide the sort of uh, the type of, of, of uh, sensor that there, there is is uh, relevant, the, 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 the devices that it wants to connect to, as well as the type of observations that each of those sensors is providing. In this case, we are selecting all. And uh, the final output of, uh, of the sensor. So basically, again, we do uh, this through a wizard so that it becomes fairly easy for uh, uh, an operator with, with, uh, without any specific uh, knowledge to use it uh, um, in a meaningful manner. Then as soon as we connect to the service, you can see that uh, the same sort of tools appear uh, at the bottom. So you have a 2D window on top, but most importantly you have either a table view where you can access all the information coming from the sensor and filter them by type, by name, um, and then you can also access the 3D view. So uh, as in the previous case of the WCS, you just fly to the area and then through those sliders you filter the, 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 the time slot of relevance for you and you, can, and you will see now in a minute that uh, as soon as uh, you fly to the area and change the parameters these are rendered in real time so that you can immediately understand what's going on in terms of, 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 of uh, sensor information. Um, and this is again, this was considered very, very, uh, very useful from, from our final user, in this case the serial protection of uh, the progress of, of Trento. Uh, now you will see in a minute that the operator will move those sliders and uh, uh, basically the, the, the information from the sensor will be, uh, will be rendered in, in real time. So again, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, and, and those sensors in this case are referring to uh, hydrological disturbances. Uh, so they are monitoring stations permanently installed to uh, assess uh, uh, sort of major landslides that is uh, affecting that, that village. And uh, through those sliders, uh, the operator can quickly uh, assess what's, what's really going on. Uh, what, what they are doing now to do the same thing is uh, they are going through uh, an awful Excel sheet and check for out layers or, or, relevant, uh, or, or information of relevance. So you can see how this approach is much more beneficial than, than their operational activities. Then, uh, something again uh, very relevant the use of NetCDF, as was mentioned before by Federico, so basically support for multidimensional information. Uh, you have this uh, simple uh, interface at the bottom of, of, of the client where you can associate to each of, each of the dimension, uh, X, Y, Z, the proper measurement of, uh, of, of relevance. So in this case, we associate to X and Y latitude and longitude, and then 
we associate a given measurement to the z, so that it can be shown also in real time. In this case, we are showing uh, wind types, I think, with the wind direction um, at, the, at the globe level. And uh, as you can see, this is immediately rendered uh, into 3D, and then through the slider, you can change the, the interval uh, of, uh, of interest. And the operator can also change the representation of the um, of the information. So again, as I mentioned before, it can be either rendered on top of the 3D scene, or the operator can decide, for instance, to replace with, with a pure vector information or with patches. And uh, for each of those visualization means, you can always change the scale of Z so that it can amplify features of, of, of relevance, um, uh, change the way those features are, are rendered, in, in this case through lines, but the operator can also decide to render them through patches. Um, and all those components that you have seen before actually are being integrated into a meaningful client. So you're seeing now what's uh, the, the, the sort of update of the project, the sort of real-time update of the project, but in the, in, the, in the end, once the development stage will be finished, the operator will have all the functionalities that we have mentioned so far available through a single interface, which is the 3D client, and the very same set of functionalities available through the Geo portal. So that's the, the, the double uh, result of, uh, of the project. And uh, we will make this available to the community so that also other operators uh, are involved uh, or are interested in their in the, in the, in the achievements. They can also be involved with us uh, in, the, in the research. So that uh, concludes the, this part where, where you see the, uh, the, the first technical results of the project in action. And then I will leave the floor to Dragon so they can conclude with a more business perspective. Uh, to speculate on the, on the impact of, of those technology on, on the market.